Hello everyone, welcome to our video series of System Verilog for Verification. In this video, I will explain some of the verification constructs added in System Verilog. So in this video, I will explain three constructs added. First, I will explain what is final blocks. After then, I will explain what is fork join. And in continuation of it, I will explain some of the enhancements of fork join that is join any and join none and at the end i will explain what is disable fork and wait fork now let's start so before moving on to final blocks let's revise about the basic procedural blocks we have seen in very log so in very log we all know that there are two types of procedural blocks first is initial blocks and second is always blocks we know that in initial blocks, statements are executed only once at the start of the simulation. And if we want to execute our statements repeatedly, then we can use always blocks in which statements are executed repeatedly based on the sensitivity list. On top of that, system Verilog has added one more procedural block called as final blocks. So what is a final block? So similar to initial block, final block is also executed only once, but the difference is it is executed at the end of the simulation. Now the question arises here is how will we identify the end of simulation to know when would the final block will be executed. So for that, whenever a dollar finish or any task or function which terminates a simulation denotes that it is the end of the simulation. So at that time only, final block will be executed. So now, since system Verilog executes a final block upon encountering dollar finish or any task which terminates simulation, now one question arises here is, if any final block itself calls a dollar finish or itself calls a task which terminates a simulation, then what will happen in that case? In that case, simulation will abort the execution of the final blocks. Now, one more important point here to notice that final block is always executed in zero time. So it cannot contain statements that consume time like hash, at, and wait. So to summarize, a final block cannot consume simulation time, but is otherwise similar to an initial block only. So you can place a final block anywhere you can place an initial block but all final blocks are executed only once at the end of the simulation so now what is the use case of final block so it is used to define actions that should be performed at the end of the simulation so thus it provides a way to perform cleanup task or it can be used to print final results or to close files so here i have been given an example of final block code so since i told that final black block can be used to print final results so one example of that is at the end of the simulation we would want to check the number of error count also so here in this final block uh, by using the final keyword i am displaying the error count using dollar display so at the end of the simulation whenever a dollar finish or a task which terminates the simulation is encountered this final block will display or print our final error count. So that's all for the final blocks. Now let's move to our next topic that is fork join. So what is a fork join? So basically in system Verilog, the fork and join construct are used to create concurrent blocks of code or you can say parallel blocks of code that can be run concurrently or parallelly in a simulation. So here we will be using the fork keyword to start the execution of these concurrent blocks and at the end the join keyword will be used to synchronize these concurrent blocks initiated by the fork. So let's understand this as an example. So here inside the fork join I have defined two blocks, one inside this first begin end and second inside this second begin end. So here, these two blocks are the two parallel blocks. So whenever four keyword is, uh, uh, whenever, stop, start. 
So whenever this four keyword is encountered, these two blocks of begin end will start executing in parallel. Now when this join keyword is encountered, it will synchronize these parallel blocks so that it will only move on when these parallel blocks have been finished. So basically, thus this fork join allows us to run multiple blocks of code concurrently and then synchronize them using the join construct to ensure that all concurrently executing blocks have completed before moving on. So let's understand this more with one more code. So here inside this initial uh, begin end, I have defined this fork join block. So inside this fork join block, I am initializing these variables x, y, z, assuming that these variables have been declared earlier. Now at time zero, I'm initializing x, y, z to zero and at different times, and I am again initializing x, y, z to one. So this is all parallel statements. Now inside this fork join, I have added one more begin end. Since we know the statements inside begin end are executed sequentially, so these are our sequential statements. So these statements will be executed parallelly, but inside this begin end, after this statement, our, these statements will be executed sequentially. So here one question arises here is, at what time does this statement execute? So if we see from the top, so inside this fork join block are all the delays are absolute. So x, y, z will be initialized to zero at time zero. And since these are all are running parallelly, so x will be assigned at five nanosecond only, y will be assigned at 10 and z will be assigned at 15. But after this statement 20 nanosecond, uh, our statements will be uh, executed sequentially. So our x will be assigned after 20 nanoseconds. So x will be assigned at 20 nanosecond. Now our next statement is assigned after this statement. That is 20 plus 5 nanosecond. That is 25 nanoseconds. Similarly, our third statement that is z equals to 0 will be assigned after this. That is 25 plus 10. That is 35. So this is how we can mix parallel and sequential statements also inside folk join. Now, let's move to our next slide in which I will explain more about some enhancements of folk join that is join any and join none. So in our previous slide also, we have seen that the join, join construct is used to synchronize all the concurrently executed blocks so that they have completed before moving on. So one condition in join statement is that it waits until all the concurrently executed blocks initiated by the fork completes before moving on. So let's understand this is an example. So here inside initial begin end, I have defined this fork join block inside which I am executing two tasks, which is execute test one and execute test two, assuming that these tasks has been declared previously. After this fork join, I am again executing one more task called execute task three. Now let's understand this within diagram. So here, as I told that the join statements wait until all the concurrently executing blocks are completed before moving on. So consider that execute test one takes this much time and execute test two takes this much time since they are executed parallelly so they both start at same time but execute test 2 is completed before and execute test 1 completed is completed after then but because of the join statement our we will move to execute task we can move to execute task 3 only when our both the test 1 and test 2 are completed so task 3 starts after the completion of test 1 but here, as we have seen that the test two is completed earlier only. So suppose if we want to start the execution of task three before at least one of the test has been completed, then how can we do that? So this is done using join any. So using join any statement, we can move to our next statement when at least one of the concurrently executed blocks initiated by the fork completes. So 
let's understand this with an example of code so here uh, this is the same code that uh, i have explained earlier but instead of join we will be using join underscore any so when i use join any so if we see in the diagram here as i explained earlier also that execute test 2 was completed earlier so here the condition is it will move on and at, after at least one of the concurrently executed blocks is completed so here whenever one of the test is completed it will move to the third task called execute task 3 so when task 2 is completed our third task called execute task 3 will start executing so this is about join any there is one more construct called join none so in join none what happens is that that it does not wait for concurrently executed blocks to complete before moving on so let's see this with an example so here like in the previous code instead of join any i am using join none so what will happen in this case that join none does not wait for the concurrently executed executing blocks to complete before moving on so here in this case our task 3 can be started just right after starting test 1 and test 2 so in this case our task 3 can also run parallelly with our uh, previous task that is test 1 and test 2 so these are the differences between join join any and join none since these different types of join allow the main process to keep going even when other frog processes are still doing their thing. So system Verilog added special commands like disable fork and wait fork that let us manage these fork processes outside the fork join block as well, which we will see in our later slide. So before starting with what is wait fork and disable fork, I will first try to start with a problem statement which will help us more understand what is the advantage of wait fork and disable fork so the same previous code i have encapsulated in a task called generate test so we'll see how this will execute so as i told that uh, join none when we uh, use join none we can move to the execute task 3 right after test 1 and test 2 are have started so here the chronology of execution of statements inside this task would be like first uh, whenever the fork is encountered test 1 and test 2 will start executing in parallel and since then it will move to the next statement called join none and since join none does not wait for the fork processes to complete before moving on so we can move to the next statement immediately before waiting for these tests to complete that is we can start this execute task 3 and when this task 3 is completed our task generate task would exit so if we see here in this diagram so here uh, when fork is encountered execute task 1 is initiated and execute task 2 is initiated parallelly and since it is join null execute task 3 is also initiated right after them now consider one scenario where executing task test one is taking more time than execute test three tasks then what will happen in this case since i told earlier also that whenever execute task three is completed task generate test would exit so our task generate test would exit immediately after this line even though our task test one was still running so one issue with join any and join none statement is that it can leave the fork processes or task running when a task exits. So this is one issue with join any and join none. For that system Verilog has added construct, constructs like disable fork and wait fork. So what is disable fork? So by using disable fork keyword, we can terminate an active fork and its associated concurrent, concurrent blocks before moving on further. So let's understand this with a code. So here in the previous code itself, after this execute task three, I have added this keyword disable fork. Now after execute task three is completed, we have a statement called disable fork. So what this disable fork will do is it will check for any active fork process is still running and it will disable it. 
So after this execute task three, this disable fork will see that that there is a active fork process running that is test one. So it will disable it, and then after that, uh, this our uh, generate uh, test task will exit. Now suppose instead of disabling it before exiting this task, if we want to wait for this test to complete, what we can do for that we have one more construct called wait fork so wait fork what it will do is it will wait for an active fork and its associated concurrent blocks to complete before moving on further so here in this code instead of disable fork i am using wait fork so when our task 3 is completed when this statement is executed is completed We'll move to this statement wait fork and what wait fork will do is it will check for any active fork processes currently running and if there is any active fork process it will wait for them to complete. So here in this case after execute task 3 since test 1 is still running wait fork will wait for test 1 to complete and when it is completed then it will move to the next statement that is end which will basically exit our task generate desk, test. So this is how using wait fork and disable fork, we can manage these fork processes outside the fork join block as, as well. So this is all for this video. Thank you everyone. For more such videos, please like, share and subscribe.